Hey guys, so today we're taking a deeper look at the 2024 Dodge Charger SRT Banshee concept, and what we know so far. This whole EV topic has taken everyone by storm. Muscle car fans hate it and want to keep the Hemi, others are very critical that Dodge is even making an EV, while some are simply curious to see what's coming and what Dodge is capable of. When Dodge revealed this EV concept in late August during Speed Week, there was a lot of buzz and attention on the car, but most of it was focusing on the looks of the vehicle. Now that the dust has settled a bit, I just want to look at everything we know about this 2024 Dodge Charger SRT Banshee. Keep in mind that this is just a concept, but it sure gives us an idea about where the production vehicle is heading. So today we'll talk about the platform and visuals, the powertrain, the transmission and power shop feature, the Fratsonic chambered exhaust, direct connection upgrades, and a second version of this car coming soon. So let's dive right in. So first we will look at the platform. I've discussed this a few times, but Stellantis is creating four different platforms going forward. Stella Small, Medium, Large, and Frame. The new Challenger and Charger will be on the Stella Large platform, and likely have similar dimensions to the current cars. In a recent interview with Fox, Stellantis Chief Design Officer Ralph Gilles explained how this concept was different than other EVs out there. He said, quote, we're trying to bring a whole generation of muscle car lovers along with us on this exciting new journey, but at the same time, I think when they make that choice, finally, they do want the world to know, so it has to be different. They're happy that it doesn't look like a jelly bean, and part of that is the front end looking menacing still, a lot of character and celebrating the brand. That's going to be our shtick. There's a lot of other companies if you want to buy jelly beans, go get it. It ain't going to come from us. End quote. So according to those words, it sounds like Dodge will keep the design very similar on the real production version, but Gilles had said that this design wasn't finalized yet. I personally would also expect Dodge to release a two-door and a four-door version if they want to still sell a Charger and Challenger. Also that center console that extends the entire length of the car inside and reduces the capacity to four passengers likely won't make it to production either. Chrysler tends to have that feature in many concepts, but of course it's not practical and it takes away a seat in the back which some people would like to have. Now the powertrain is where things get interesting. Along with that muscle car look, performance is arguably the most important factor of this vehicle as that's what Dodge is known for. Just look at their website where they promote the brotherhood of muscle and they're always talking about how they have the fastest or most powerful car in some way. For example, the Charger Hellcat Red Eye being the world's fastest mass produced sedan. Now we've known for a while that the Hellcat engine is gone after 2023 and the Charger and Challenger, while the 5.7 liter and 6.4 liter Hemi V8 engines are getting replaced by the new twin-turbocharged 3.0-liter Hurricane inline 6-cylinder engines. This move has left most of us muscle car enthusiasts very disappointed. The whole point of Dodge was their muscle cars, and that meant a nice-sounding V8 under the hood with big displacement, something that Dodge began offering since 2005 in their passenger cars, and from 2003 in Ram trucks. What makes it even more gut-wrenching is that Ford continues to offer V8s, rear-wheel drive, and a 6-speed manual in their all-new 2024 Mustangs. So that means that the performance better be up to speed, so at least Dodge will have something to brag about. So far, the Dodge brand has only talked about their battery electric vehicles for the future, but it also makes sense they will offer internal combustion engines as well. They just simply cannot jump from Hellcats and 6.4 liter Hemis straight to no gas, as not only are people not prepared for this, but many simply won't want to buy an EV due to factors like range anxiety, lack of charging infrastructure, or just a plain traditional mindset. We can also look back in time, where in 2004, Dodge announced that Magnum would be their large car, and then a few years later we ended up with the 300, Magnum, Charger, and Challenger all at the same time. So bottom line, I fully expect to see a next-gen Charger and Challenger with both the Hurricane standard output, which has 420 horsepower and 468 pound-feet of torque to replace the 5.7 liter Hemi, and the Hurricane high output with 510 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque to replace the 6.4 liter Hemi and both of those engines also have around 15% fewer emissions than the comparable Hemis. But we are here to talk about the EVs and that Banshee concept. Dodge CEO Tim Kaniskis has said there will be up to 9 different power levels available, but so far we do know that Dodge will offer 3 different outputs from the factory, and there will be an entry-level model that is somewhat affordable. During Dodge Speed Week in August, Kaniskis said, quote, The Charger Daytona will launch with 3 power levels, all the way up to this 800-volt Banshee system. We're also developing nine power levels through direct connection, end quote. So to keep costs down for both the company and the consumer, the entry-level model will probably use a 400-volt architecture, so that's something that would be on par with the Tesla Model 3. During the 2021 Stellantis EV Day, 
It was said that there will be offerings that range from 150 kilowatts to 330 kilowatts, which is equivalent to 201 to 443 horsepower on Stellantis' electric drive module number 3, or EDM number 3 E motor for short. Overall, this would also offer up to 500 miles of range on the cars and standard all-wheel drive. If the Stella Large architecture can handle two or three of these modules, then that means even an entry-level Charger or Challenger could have 400 plus horsepower, which would be more than the current lower-level gas options and enough to compete with the Hemis. One example is the new Maserati Gran Turismo Folgore Gran Tourer, which is all-electric and has a total output of 750 horsepower. Something like that, with the e-motors and all-wheel drive, would be a suitable replacement for the current standard Hellcats that make 717 horsepower. So it makes sense, offer a single motor as the entry level, a dual motor as the second option, and a tri-motor as the higher performance vehicle. What does this mean for the Banshee concept? Well, we know it will feature all-wheel drive. We also know the term Banshee is not the name of the car, but the car's 800 volt architecture. That's not really a new idea, as if you think about it, the Hellcat wasn't really the name of that car either, but mostly the engine that powered it. And those cars that are powered by the Banshee system will have Banshee badges to go along with it. Dodge hasn't officially confirmed that the Banshee will use a tri-motor layout, but for Dodge to compete with the Tesla Model S Plaid, they will have to. A tri-motor setup in this next Dodge vehicle would yield around 1,000 to 1,200 horsepower, and that would be enough for Dodge to continue the horsepower wars and even claim a title such as the most powerful mass-produced sedan or coupe, and possibly the quickest as well, if they can beat the Model S Plaid's 1,020 horsepower and some of their performance times. So just for a quick comparison here, the Tesla Model 3 performance with the dual motors has an MSRP of $56,390, and it makes 480 horsepower and can do 0-60 to in 3.1 seconds with a 315 mile range. The base 2023 Tesla Model S also uses dual motors, costs $96,590, has 670 horsepower, and a 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds, and a 375 mile range. The top tier Model S Plaid has an insane 1,020 horsepower using three electric motors, and that is capable of a 0 to 60 in 1.99 seconds, quarter mile of 9.23 seconds, a top speed of 200 miles per hour, and 348 miles of range. Of course, the price is very high, starting at $127,590 US. But still, those Model S Plaid times are both faster than the 2018 Dodge Challenger SRT Demon. Dodge has also talked about how their e-muscle car will feature a new Erupt multi-speed transmission that has electromechanical shifting to deliver distinctive shift points. Much is unknown about this. Mopar Insiders compared it to the electric Porsche Taycan, which sends power to the front wheels through a single speed gearbox and to the rear wheels via a two speed transmission and limited slip differential. The first gear is short to provide maximum acceleration, while the second gear has a long ratio for top speed and better efficiency. One feature we know this new EV will have is the power shop button. This will be found on the steering wheel and adds a boost of horsepower as long as the battery charge and temperature levels are at certain levels. This will also be featured on the 2023 Dodge Hornet RT plug-in hybrid electric car. So to give an idea of what it does, on the Hornet, we know it gives you a boost of 25 horsepower and instant torque, it shaves 1 second off of your 0-60 to mph times, and it gives you 15 seconds of that extra horsepower, and then it can be repeated after a 15 second cooldown period. Another huge discussion point here was the fake exhaust note, or as Dodge calls it the Fratsonic chambered exhaust, a phrase that was trademarked by Dodge. Everyone loves the sound of a Hemi V8, stock or upgraded, it doesn't matter, they usually sound fantastic. And obviously, BEVs like the Teslas are dead silent other than road noise. The EV concept showcased this system, which pushes sound through an amplifier and tuning chamber located at the rear of the vehicle, letting those around the car and also inside of it feel a vibration of what a traditional gas car can produce, as well as a distinctive noise. Kaniskis says the sound from the concept was, quote, very polarizing on purpose, end quote, and that he is not done yet. Dodge hinted that each of the EV variants will sound different from each other, just like today's cars. As for the next topic, as I mentioned earlier, Kaniska said that Dodge is developing nine power levels through direct connection. Each of the three variants will offer at least three performance upgrades from the DC program to boost power. So that's where the nine levels come from, three by three. 
This will be done through an over-the-air update to the software in the car. There will be also a lot more offered through direct connection, like suspension mods, a slam mode, a drift mode, drag mode, and donut mode, along with those different soundtracks for the Fratsonic chambered exhaust system. So while this does sound pretty cool, it's not that cool that you have to pay for these features when they could or should come from the factory on the car. Now for the final topic of the video, there will be another version of this concept coming soon. Kaniskis told Autoline After Hours that Dodge will be showing off another version of the Charger Daytona SRT Banshee in November at the 2022 SEMA show in Las Vegas. That's where we will see and learn more about the direct connection upgrades and the program going forward. Kaniskis said, quote, Stay tuned for SEMA this year. We're going to show a different version of this car at SEMA because we know it's absolutely critical to our buyers. 50% of them modify their cars today. So at SEMA, we're going to show you a different flavor of this, a different look, and a different feel to this car, and we're going to talk about how and why we launched Direct Connection well in advance on internal combustion engines so that we could transition to electrification." End quote. So that's the end of this video on everything we know about the 2024 Charger Daytona SRT Banshee. Hopefully we'll find out more soon, especially at the 2022 SEMA show. Otherwise, what do you think of this vehicle so far? Are you excited with it or disappointed? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar news and updates, and I'll see you all in the next video.